Um, just to introduce myself, um, my name is Hayley Grix. I am the uh, project director from Arab side on this program. Um, Arab were supporting NSSP by providing um, quality and technical assurance um, to the program and working very closely with um, ENSA in particular. And one of our key activities was to um, develop this construction manual. So thrilled to be here today and it's great to see um, so many of you here and, and thank you all um, again for joining. Um, so just to kind of reiterate what Leela has said, um, the session today is on the construction manual. Um, the purpose of the construction manual is to really ensure that the retrofit designs are implemented effectively on site. And this is specifically for um, the local communities and people that may not have um, a huge amount of experience um, in implementing retrofit solutions um, locally. Um, and in doing that, we want to ensure that the quality of construction is, is high. And to ensure quality on in, during construction, we're really focusing on quality workmanship and the use of quality materials as per the design. So that's really the focus of the construction manual. And in developing this construction manual, we have ensured that it's user friendly and appropriate for those that will be using it. Um, and, and we'll talk a bit more about that throughout the session. And it communicates that technical information clearly to the appropriate users to um, enable to ensure quality during construction. So I'm now going to hand over to Vita and um, yeah, look very much looking forward to this session. Thank you. Thanks, Hayley. So yeah, I'm Vita. Um, I work with Hayley um, and Leela and Amy on, on NSSP. Um, I'm a structural engineer um, by trade. And yeah, we're going to just do a quick set run through of the contents of the manual. We won't go in depth, um, but you can use the QR code uh, to download it from the NSET website. So huge thanks to NSET for, um, for hosting that on their on their website um, and I think um, Jemima will also post the link in the chat as well. Um, so just to run through um, what we're planning for this this afternoon, um, as I said we'll go through kind of what what it's for and the purpose um, we'll do a little introdu interactive session with everybody. So if you have your mobiles to hand um, or another sort of internet device um, it's really easy we'll just go onto a quick website and do a bit of uh, finding out about who's who's here and um, and then we'll just go through each chapter in turn and just do a brief explanation of how to use it and then we have our speakers um, in the session third session um, for a question and answer panel um, we'll also be taking questions from um, the audience, so please put your questions in the chat box. If um, things come up, um, we'll answer them along the way. Um, okay, so just to introduce um, sort of what it's what it's for, as Haley mentioned just now, really we're focusing on the construction um, phase, so improved quality of construction, so looking at the materials and the workmanship. Um, for retrofitting. Um, it's designed to be used by the field teams um, and in particular to be used by those who are in a construction supervision or monitoring role. Um, and as Leela mentioned, that this was developed for the, for the project over the last couple of years. Um, so within the sort of implementation phase, um, implementation phases of a project, um, you have your planning and your design and then this is really focusing on the implementation of that design on site so looking at construction management looking at quality assurance on site uh, material testing health and safety specification of materials and the methodology itself of the, of the construction techniques um, obviously it's important to note that all of the stages are really important but the manual really does focus on the construction phase um, because for NSSP, that's where we really felt the most impact would be would be had um, for this type of guidance. So 
Um, it has two sort of halves of it. Um, one is on sort of construction advice, so that's your quality assurance and um, health and safety and material specification, which would apply to almost all the projects. And then the second part is specifically looking at different retrofit solutions. So you might have more, one or maybe two of these different solutions in each project, so you wouldn't need to use the whole pack um, to just pick the, pick the types that were relevant for each project. Um, so really, um, the manual is aimed at obviously everybody that's involved in the construction of school retrofits in Nepal. Um, as I mentioned, it's primary audiences for construction supervisors, but really all of the, the field teams and also the teams that are involved in the quality monitoring or quality assurance. Um, it's been assumed that everybody has a sort of basic construction knowledge, but that maybe retrofit in particular is something that's quite new. Um, and therefore we're really focusing on the specific techniques um, that you need to, to implement quality retrofit. Um, and as Haley mentioned earlier, really it's um, to, help, to help interpret technical drawings. Um, if, if there is something that's not quite familiar and this, as you'll see later on, we do a sort of step-by-step -step construction sequence for each um, type of retrofitting, and that's to help sort of break down those technical drawings into something that's sort of more manageable and easy to, to implement. Um, so um, we would like to know a little bit about you. If everybody could go, on their phones and uh, go to menti.com and um, pull that up. Um, I'll just give you guys a minute to, to log on um, or you can scan the, scan the code with your phone if you are into QR codes, which you'll see by the fact that there's a QR code on every single page of this presentation I am. Um, and you should be able to get um, to a screen where you have to put in a voting code. So I'll just switch over. You should still be able to see the code up there at the top. Um, and hopefully we'll get a few answers. Um, so just doing this really to find out about who we've got. Um, so we've got some engineer, strong presence from engineers, good. Um, some of the NSSP team. Um, give it a second. Amy and Jemima, I can't see the chat, by the way. So if there's anything else that comes up on there, um, let me know. Uh, more engineers, QA officer. Nothing's yeah, so coming from the chat, Vita, just so you know. Okay, perfect. Um, one minute, two. Okay, cool. I think we'll keep going. Um, but it's great to see that we've got quite a few engineers and people that are in quality assurance. Um, so yeah, really, that's, that's super key and, and interesting to, to see, you know, this is, this is who the manual is really aimed at. So I'm going to go on to the next question, which is to find out about um, any um, whether people have already got experience in retrofitting. I know the NSSP team is going to have something to say about this, but... Um... Cool. 
cool. Okay, proper mix. So for, for those that don't have any experience or only a little bit of experience in retrofitting, you know, this is, you know, exactly where something like this will be really helpful to, to kind of um, improve understanding of the actual construction phases of the retrofitting and, and enable people to support the field teams um, to, to carry those out um, with, with high quality. I think we've stopped going. Um, and then I think the final one here is just, I know we've got two more, sorry. Um, so um, one of the things that really was the reason for having the manual is because one of the areas that we saw um, there to be a lot of benefit for quality improvement was um, in, the, in the construction phase. So it'd be interesting to hear if there are any specific challenges that um, you've got on site, not necessarily with retrofit construction, but any construction that you've been involved with in the past. What were the challenges? Um, oh, we've got materials, we've got skilled masons, workmanship, materials again, poor documentation, that's really interesting. Need for constant supervision. So yeah, I mean, so one of the, the sort of two halves that I mentioned really was about um, materials and workmanship. So I can see a few, so skilled masons, that's really under the, the workmanship part. And um, yeah, availability material testing labs, that's really interesting. So sort of field testing is, is maybe something that would be interesting to kind of combat some of the lack of the labs. Um, materials coming up a few times. Time constraints, that's interesting. Um, the need for constant supervision. So supervision is, is really the first chapter um, really looks at, at supervision and, and how you can kind of organize, um, particularly if you've got lots of different sites um, and you want to implement at scale, um, how you could sort of make sure that you, you know, where you have limited resources, make sure you can still get quality without loads and loads of um, supervision. Difficult to find specialist skills, more votes for materials. Okay, great. I think I'll keep going um, and we'll head back to the presentation. That was really interesting. Um, I'm hoping this is going to allow me to keep going. Okay, so in terms of the actual content of the manual, it's got five chapters um, and we say so that obviously the introduction looks at some of what I've just explained about the purpose and the scope of the manual and um, contains quite a lot of the information that you'll see in this presentation about how to use it. Um, the second is around quality assurance and site management. So this goes back to that implementation um, and supervision aspect. So it has um, information on how the quality assurance processes might work. Um, then we um, then we look at health and safety because obviously that's a really important part of the site works, making sure that everybody is able to get home safely and you really minimize the um, risk of accidents on site while you're doing this type of work. Um, the fourth is around the material specifications. So as you just heard a lot about um, the materials. Um, so this looks at each of the different types of materials that we typically um, specify in retrofitting. Um, and then the fifth uh, chapter is, um, as I mentioned earlier, looking at different types of methodologies for retrofit. And I'll, look at, I'll go into that in a bit more detail um, when we get to that phase. So um, the first lot of the chapters are really for every project. Um, so health and safety, quality assurance, materials, 
Um, and then chapter five is looks back at those chapters, but references them in particular around each phase of the retrofitting. So if you're doing jacketing, you will look at, you know, the materials for jacketing and, and it will go from, from stage to stage. And the, the manual is cross-referenced um, throughout, so it's really easy to read. Um, and yeah, as you go through, you'll be able to reference the relevant parts of different, of different chapters as you go through. So um, in terms of the introduction, obviously it's for everybody reading it, um, it explains what's in it, as you can see, some familiar <laughs> images, really the information that's contained in this presentation for people that are just picking it up um, and reading it for the first time. Um, it has a bit of background for NSSP. Um, so yeah, so that's as most introductions are. So the second chapter around quality assurance and um, site management is really aimed at the site supervisors and the quality assurance managers. Um, so um, as somebody mentioned the need for constant supervision, so it kind of has techniques in terms of cascading down that um, supervision and how to make the most of the different roles that you have um, and, and ensure as the quality, even though you might not have a, you know, a, a district engineer sitting on your site every day, um, but you, you would have a, a mechanism and a framework in which you could implement some of that quality. Um, it also looks at some digital methodologies um, for um, reporting on quality on site, um, which we found to be really useful in remote, for some of the more remote sites. And it also enables um, again, a more constant feedback from site in areas where you might want to make sure you've got a constant um, supervision. Um, and, and it really focuses on the key moments of the construction as well. So within it, it contains um, a set of sort of quality assurance forms, which um, are referenced again through the, through the um, through the processes, but sort of gives a framework for how you might want to report every month, um, how you might want to like log your materials, setting up stock cards so that you can, you know, control what's coming in and being used on the site, how you might manage change, um, have your daily worker registers, and then also, and it's a really important part, is around the handover process. So how are you ensuring that when you finish, finished, everything is done, um, that who you're handing over to really understands um, what's, been, what's been done and any sort of operation and maintenance aspects that are key to kind of ensuring that the building is, is running as, as fast as possible running as fast, running as well. Um, so here are a few examples that um, in, the, in the manual there is a PDF, but um, we are going to try and upload the Excel versions of these. They're all just fill-inable forms um, that, that can be downloaded and used. Um, so the third chapter, as I mentioned, is focused on the health and safety. Um, and really it's, you know, the leadership of health and safety will come from the super site supervisors, but really it's for everybody and to understand um, key aspects of uh, personal protective equipment. There's a section on COVID, of course, because you can't do anything without adding a section on COVID. Um, things like the safety briefing, um, how you want to set up your site, things about particular hazards and risk assessments um, that will be relevant um, for the different types of retrofitting. Um, the fourth chapter, as we mentioned, um, is around each of the different materials. So for each one of the six that you can see here, um, there's a sort of section that explains um, certain on-site testing that you can do um, and make sure that you know as you what you that the people on site will know what to check when materials get delivered and that sort of thing. Um, 
And then the final chapter is really to, to focus on each of these retrofit techniques. We've got 11 um, and each chapter is a kind of self-contained um, uh, piece of information for each one of these. So we've got, um, and, so, and you know, you might have one or two of these on each project, on each building. So you might have a, a foundation improvement um, and you might be doing some jacketing as well. Um, so they're sort of designed to be, to be mixed and matched depending on what the design is addressing in terms of the limitations of the existing building. Um, and these have been sort of, we had an initial list and as we started to do the designs for an SSP, we built on the sort of library of the techniques based on what we were coming across in terms of being appropriate solutions for the buildings that we were retrofitting um, for an SSP. On, um, on each of these, so there's a sort of summary, as I said, it references the health and safety. Um, and then here in the key engineering checks is a list of quality assurance points that at each stage, you know, you might want to make sure that are being sort of checked off. And within the forms in the, in the earlier chapters, there's a sort of tick list um, that can be filled in, um, which has each one of these. Um, quality assurance points. Um, the description of what ha what has to happen, um, and obviously it's a step by step, so it, it goes through what what each um, stage is. Um, for a lot of them, there's a sort of exploded three D view of the technique to kind of help um, explain maybe the two D engineering drawings um, in a bit more detail showing how all the pieces fit together. Um, obviously this is gener a generic image um, and the one in the, in the drawings will be specific for that building, but it's to show kind of all the different parts and to make sure that, you know, it's clear where, how the pieces go together and, and, what, they, um, and what they are involved, um, how, it's, how they all fit together. Um, so, as I mentioned, we have um, a step-by-step um, -step, um, for each of one of the techniques. So um, we have this one is an example for replacing the slab. And so it sort of shows the temporary works, shows the demolition of the existing, how you might set up formwork, um, how you lay the rebar. And as you can see in each one of the stages, you have your health and safety checks. Um, and then you have your couple points on, on quality assurance that should be. And the idea is that you do this step and you do those checks and before you move on to the next one, um, you know, you know you've got some confidence that, that things are progressing to a high quality. Um, so we've got another Mentimeter here. And um, I'm going to stop sharing for two seconds because without Lauren, I don't have enough screens <laughs> to pull this up. Um, so if I just put that up there for a second um, and everybody can go back to the Menti and I will um, swap over my slides. So we're just going to do, oh, sorry guys. Right, uh, one quick question. Um, and if everybody could log on again, you'll need to uh, refresh the mentee um, and put in a new code. Um, right. Um, and really, I'm just sort of interested in, in which of the chapters that we've gone through um, people think um, would be the most useful in terms of what they do in their sort of working um, career. A couple early votes for the methodologies. 
Good, somebody wants to say, <laughs> please, about that. Construction methodology coming out a clear, a clear favorite. Give it a minute. Um. Okay. Great. Okay. So really looks like the methodology and the, the quality assurance side of things is really um, resonating with people, um, uh, which is great. Um, obviously, all of these things are included. Um, we're sort of just doing this to see, um, yeah, see really where people might get the most amount of use out of it. Just give it one minute and then I'll switch back to my presentation. Um, and we'll be handing over to our panelists in a minute. Okay. I'm gonna switch back to this. Okay, so um, I hope that was a, a really useful brief introduction. Obviously I've not gone into detail around um, sort of the technical aspects of each chapter, just more of an overview of what's contained in all of them. Um, and so if I think you've had enough from me, um, so I'm gonna hand over um, to our panelists um, and the, they're sort of gonna be talking around their experience of retrofitting, um, some of the challenges in achieving quality construction and, and perhaps a bit around how the manual might be adapted in future. Um, so without further ado, um, Arjun, if you're online, if you could um, turn on your video. Hi. Uh, hi, hi hello. welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, so um, Arjun is the Deputy Chief of Party um, for a USAID project, um, uh, the Reconstruction Engineering services project. Um, so I will go on to your slides. Arjun, over to you. Please just tell me next when you're when you're ready sure. for the next slide. Sure. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, namaste and good afternoon all. Uh, thank you very much you know, for inviting me this um, learning event. Um, yeah, um, let's go to the next slide. I was um, kind of you know thinking of you know um, yes, since you know we do have this manual from NSSP project. I was thinking of you know do we really need a manual? You know is there a need of you know this kind of manual? Then I tried to look into you know what I was doing and what I was doing you know um, under USAID's uh, Nepal Reconstruction Engineering Services project. So you know then I thought yes. But you know, um, let me tell you, you know, how did I arrive at you know answering that you know yes, there is a need of, of this manual, and you know uh, basically as you were highlighting, Vita, kind of you know the standardizing this, and then you know uh, this means the effort of you know construction or retrofitting, you know, um, and and you know that would result into a quality product. Then you know. Um, Pretty much close to saying yes, and but you know, let me tell the uh, reasons, the experiences, and then you know, you know how this manually you know takes us into that direction. So um, you know, um, I was trying to see you know what happened you know um in construction sector after the uh, 2015 Gorkha earthquake. So we, we we see that you know, the uh, construction you know, including retrofitting, you know, activities were, you know, more intense and we realized that, you know, quality construction is needed. Um, um, then, you know, um, also, you know, was trying to see, you know, if, if we are to standardize this, you know, our, is there any reference, you know, in our, in our reconstruction effort? And, you know, um, I got this uh, document, you know, post-disaster recovery framework, you know, which government came up with, but, you know, 
the all the agencies you know contributing to reconstruction effort you know agreed and committed for this so we picked up that in our you know, nepal reconstruction um, you know engineering services project for the reconstruction of education and you know health facilities in a number of districts like you know, Kathmandu, Bhaktapur, um, Sindhuli, and Mopanpur. So we tried to see, you know, uh, what uh, together with the government of Nepal we committed to proceed with, and you know, try to uh, draw, you know, what were the strategic objectives. So you know, if you look into those, you know, the, it says, you know, uh, we need to have safe structures. You know, how do we achieve that? Do we want to go in you know, individually, or we want to have a reference that provides us standardization, you know, on our effort? Definitely, yes, then that means a manual is needed. Yeah. You know, uh, how can we have a kind of, you know, the harmonious in the society? You know, uh, can we, you know, again, you know, uh, bring this population back to the services that were, you know, being offered, you know, prior to the, um, you know, the uh, earthquake? Is there any, any, any opportunity to support livelihood? And, you know, um, is there a, any ways and means to build, you know, capacity so that, you know, we have, you know, more resilient, you know, construction in, you know, um, the next you know, couple of years or in a decade. So then, you know, looking to all this, um, just, you know, uh, we again, you know, um, drop down to, you know, uh, components, you know, um, that laid out, you know, framework for the reconstruction. So there were 18, you know, components, but, you know, let me take just a couple of them, you know, to, um, you know, go more in, uh, in retrofitting. So next slide, please. That come through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, um, so you know, from the uh, you know framework, uh, we try to draw you know a couple of elements you know that contributes to resilient design. So you know, adoption of you know careful site selection you know free from hazards. And you can see the pictures. You know, the sites you know close to you know flood area or in the steep slope needs to be you know avoided, which is also you know incorporated in the manual you know, that recently NSSP has you know offered. Um, there are some elements you know that contribute you know for resilient design, like you know we um, you know uh, followed the national building code and other uh, other you know, uh, guidelines and regulations the uh, government agencies you know put forward. And in, in the case of need, we uh, also modified structural design you know based on the system code. You know primarily we adopted you know uh, took opportunity to you know uh, implement the US you know uh, system code as well. Um, also, you know, um, there are opportunities to um, have, you know, choice of resilient materials, of course, you know, the um, local materials in the design and, you know, as, you know, per the case, you know, remodeling and retrofitting, you know, of the, uh, of the structures, you know, basically, you know, for cost effectiveness as well. Um, so at the same time, you know, uh, one needs to incorporate, you know, the commitment of you know, uh, the communities for its, its, you know, continued operations and maintenance, which is also touched upon by, you know, this manual, you know, at the later, you know, phase. Um, of course, the manual has, you know, seriously looked into the need of, you know, quality control and quality assurance, and also, you know, tries to bring in local and international best practices, which, which you know, we also, you know, uh, you know, brought into, you know, our reconstruction projects. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, and also, you know, to, to, to have this, you know, um, basically social infrastructure, uh, you know, um, you know, um, you know uh, built, you know, with the standard and quality as anticipated, you know, you know, there are a number of actors that, you know, interface or interact with each other. So um, to have a you know, similar kind of understanding and, you know, you know um, knowledge and, you know, practice to put in place, you know, the um, building of you know, national capacity is also very essential. So uh, we work together with the government agencies and also help them you know, update national building code 
and you know, standardize the uh, guidelines. So capacity building, you know, activities range from, you know, um, different, you know, levels at the local level, you know, basically from the communities, with the construction workers, and we also work with the uh, local, you know, design consultants. You know, we had series of, you know, design workshops with them to incorporate, you know, uh, you know, um, the uh, the resilient you know, aspects in the uh, designs. Um, next slide, please. So um, then, you know, um, the you know um, some of the, um, the buildings were you know totally demolished and you know um, a new construction took place. But in some of the cases, you know, uh, we went for our retrofitting. So I'm picking up, you know, the um, you know um, our objectives on uh, retrofitting. We wanted to see, you know, uh, whether there is a possibility to revive historical and glorious architecture of the building. Yes, this is possible through, you know, um, uh, retrofitting uh, activity. And, um, you know, when you go for, you know, the uh, construction or retrofitting, you know, you come across with a different set of stakeholders with, you know, different values and, you know, uh, you need to understand them and prioritize their sentiment, you know, retrofitting does offer you this kind of you know, opportunities. Um, in addition, you know, it also allows you to utilize um, existing building materials and also, you know, offer uh, unique functions like you know, the, uh, in the case of the schools, the libraries, science labs, offices, toilets, you know, all this could be, you know, placed in such a way that, you know, these are, you know, disabled uh, friendly. So this, this arrives, you know, uh, or this becomes a kind of, you know, inclusive design. Uh, we also, you know, looked into bringing back the children to, you know, the uh, similar or the you know, same kind of you know, academic environment, you know, that they were used to of. So we will, so we try to you know, maintain you know, the uh, academic environment um, as well. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so here, you know, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to see, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, share with you, you know. Uh, you know, one of the schools in um, Kathmandu, in the Bhaktapura, others a secondary school on the left, you, know, you can see the building before retrofitting. It was, you know, constructed, you know, 50 years back with the USAID, uh, US government support. And, you know, now through USAID support, you know, this is, you know, re reconstructed, restored with, you know, additions of a number of buildings you know, that meets, you know, the uh, requirements of the day. Um, you know, if you further look, you know, into more detail, you know, then the, you can see the stone cladding and, you know, timber textures, you know, which is also essential elements, you know, when you, when you go for uh, retrofitting. So um, the retrofitting uh, um, basically, you know, included in, in, in particularly in this case, you know, um, uh, retrofitting of column, basically strengthening it again, you know, retrofitting of walls, you know, foundation strengthening through, you know, um, you know piling works and all that. Uh, next, please. And, you know, going outside Kathmandu, you know, uh, in Sinduli, uh, we can cross with um, um, health facilities, you know, where, uh, you know, people had, you know, um, different, you know, um, Kind of you know, sentiments within the new new kind of structures and, and you know we valued that and we shared with them and we, we, we took into consideration of their concerns so the existing building was uh, retrofitted and you know the space requirement were readjusted so the building was whole you know our whole building was replanned and remodeled so going through you know uh, retrofitting one can capture this kind of, of opportunities you know uh, in a Cost effective manner. Um, so, next one, please. So, um, yeah, then, you know, um, yeah, as, as you know, um, today, you know, we're introducing the NS, NS, uh, NSSP construction manual, you know. Um, no, but what I found is, you know, this pretty much, you know, covers overall aspects of retrofitting, you know, including the uh, constructions. We all saw that, you know, uh, Vita's presentations. You know, one of the interesting part is that, you know, it does have, you know, a high level of illustrations with visual aids and it has made, you know, the manual very easy to understand. Not only, not only easy to understand, but also, you know, put in application. In, 
and put in applications you know by the sub engineers and the technical personnel you know working at remote locations of nepal uh, but at the same time you know um, one might come across with you know, difficulties in reading you know, the engineer drawings of retrofitting you know these are bit complex in uh, in uh, at times so i uh, just wanted to share with you that you know um, it does include you know illustrations on 2d and 3d figures but if this could be linked with you know engineering drawings you know, that may be quite helpful for the uh, users you know that they are at you know, site level um you know uh, going back to key stages the technical team has you know uh, you know worked out in much detail but you know uh, i was trying to see uh, the uh, detailed design also incorporated at you know design stage you know yes you have talked about conceptual design and you know construction documentation if construction documentation does include detailed design i'm fine with that but if not you know let's look into that also um you know one of the um, uh, you know um, you know options could be you know start thinking about technical specification you know from the very beginning of you know design stage rather than you know putting this at you know a later stage um yeah you know uh, the manual also you know um, advises you know there there could be possibility of uh, variations so the actual designs may not be you know um, taken into the field because of the you know, varying conditions at site so we need to have in you know, as built drawings also this can be incorporated in the construction stages um yes uh, it may be quite challenging for the sub engineers you know to solely take the responsibility of quality assurance so um i i would like to propose you know additional hands you know uh, to the uh, sub engineers if that is the possibility and and you know if that can be accommodated in the uh, organization chart uh, next please um one of the very uh, important and interesting part you know all the uh, manual has in advice is for you know a uh, mobile you know use of mobile application you know uh, or app you know for the uh, you know remote monitoring we also did practice the you know for the um, day to day progress weekly progress monthly progress and even for you know environmental um, you know um, uh, auditing as well so uh, this is very good that you know manual has rightly captured this also and primarily you know looking into present context of pandemic and you know remote locations i am pretty sure that you know this will be very much uh, helpful thank you very much you know for capturing this not only that you know um, you know uh, looking into present context of covid 19 you know um, you i find you know you guys very smart in you know um, capturing the health and safety part and you know elaborating on the covid 19 you know protocols as well. these are very much simple this can be you know more complex depending upon the scale and nature of the construction um um, you know, um, going down to material specifications, you know, um, it's, it's, it's very powerful, you know, graphics that I found, you know, you have, you know, presented there, and this is pretty much uh, useful, you know, I also you know, got opportunity to get, you know, educated from some of the graphics, uh, what was, you know, wondering, you know, um, because, you know, um, there have been a lot of effort from uh, government agencies and other agencies, you know, working together with the government, so there are a number of guidelines, I'm pretty much sure that you know you are aware of that. So try to see you know how this can complement or you know whether there are you know areas you know that, that needs you know kind of you know reference and you know you you may want to polish the manual. Um, yes, you know this manual is pretty much you know intended for the um, actors or the you know, stakeholders on the field. So uh, I would suggest, but this is not easy task, but you know, to put this in Nepali language for a wider reach out and you know, help you know, raising awareness at grassroots level and you know, would be you know, uh, helpful for other stakeholders, you know, for example, school management committees and all that. So I find you know, this manual has pretty much uh, needed. Um, the retrofitting particularly is uh, more than a regular or ordinary construction practice. So, you know, uh, it is a different art and skill and requires extra miles of patience. And, you know, to aid that, I think, you know, this man is very helpful. Thank you very much, technical team, and thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Arjun G. Thank you for that really comprehensive um, review of, of some of the aspects of your projects and highlighting the areas of the manual that 
that you found really interesting. I, I mean, your last line there, I think, is really, really important. And, and we talked about that yesterday as well at the session about, you know, it is a specific skill. It's really a useful and cost effective methodology, but it does it does require extra mile of patience. I like that phrase. That's perfect. Um, so yeah, thank you very, very much for that. Um, and if, if people have questions for about the manual of Arjun, please, please post them in the chat. And next up we have um, um, Narayan, are you there um, from NSET? If you just give me um, Yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, bear with me two seconds. Um, while I just change these over. Going to present and try and share my screen again. Right. Okie doke. Thanks, Noreen Narin. Um, some of you have heard from earlier this week. He is our deputy team lead for NSSP um, and is uh, working for the for NSET, the National Society of Earthquake Technology. Narin, do you want to take us away? Thank you. Thank you, Vita. Uh, very insightful and the very diagnosis uh, presentation from Arjun Sir uh, for NSSP com, uh, read with, uh, manual. That is uh, actually very helpful to update and further uh, enhancement the uh, manual in future. So um, uh, uh, why we develop this manual uh, on the technical side, Vita already mentioned about the what are uh, included in the manual, but um, how we came up to develop the manual and then use it in the remote area uh, through our project as a piloting. I'll talk uh, on that line. Maybe this is helpful for the um, audience uh, participant and then uh, maybe more useful uh, this manual to, to manage the um, uh, retributive project uh, for a similar kind of the project in future. So basically, uh, yes, we have the um, uh, construction super, uh, supervision manual um, uh, developed from the different agency and then discuss through the technical working group uh, meeting uh, under the leadership of the uh, CSRD and Ministry of Education. But that is uh, basically more focused on the um, uh, general construction super, uh, supervision um, uh, condition and more focus on the new construction. So this manual, uh, when we <clears throat> did the in, uh, inception, we reviewed the document and we feel that uh, we, we need the um, um, very um, uh, process and the very uh, quite, uh, quite clear um, uh, step uh, uh, wise in, um, guidance manual to scale up the retrofitting uh, work uh, throughout the country. Basically, this is um, um, uh, how to manage the maximum number of um, uh, sites through the minimum human resources. That is the intention of this manual on the um, uh, retrofitting. Um, uh, uh, project uh, management uh, perspective. Uh, basically, if we, if we uh, talk on the details, if we go on the details of the manual, here we conceptualize from the three sub-engineer and one uh, construction technician in each side and the one engineer in a palika can um, 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 handle the 15 schools. And if we look on the school, we have the, we need to uh, extend them more than five to six um, um, uh, block in each school as an average. That means on that volume of the work from the, these uh, minimum resources, um, how to ensure the quality. That is the intention of the, our manual and, and the guidance, uh, not only on the technical part, how to involve the community, SMC, school principal um, uh, establishing the construction uh, committee under the SMC. These all are um, uh, um, uh, process uh, try to um, 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 systemize uh, on, the, on the manual. I hope this will be more um, uh, useful for the scaling, uh, scaling of the um, uh, retrofitting work um, uh, in future as uh, we have um, uh, give the uh, very good design since 2003 in Nepal for the new construction, but we are lacking on the quality of the construction. So how to um, uh, ensure with this uh, technical deficit uh, is the one, one, another aspect of the uh, 
uh, developing this manual. I hope this will not be duplicate is uh, working since more than 15 years in this country on this field. Uh, uh, definitely will not duplicate, but it will be complementary for whatever the document we have um, uh, right now. So uh, that's why this is the learning session. We want to disseminate. This is the product of the NSSP. This can be uh, used by the any stakeholder who are um, 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 working in the country or um, uh, implementing the massive um, uh, construction sites. As uh, we know, the schools are not nearby. Some, um, uh, if we are uh, working on the two schools in a one municipality in remote area, maybe uh, two, three hours uh, need to be uh, walk. Um, uh, it takes uh, to reach to the uh, two to three hours from one school to uh, others. So how to uh, supervise and how to maintain the quality from the single person in the cluster approach. That is the intention of our uh, um, uh, manual uh, and uh, uh, the audience or uh, uh, suggestion on to, to update further. That is actually, uh, the, this is the in, uh, what we thought at the beginning is we will develop the manual, we'll test on our side and then share with the, uh, our uh, partner and stakeholder and then again incorporate the, um, uh, those suggestions uh, and then further implement uh, through the pilot um, uh, piloting in the project. That is our intention, but unfortunately, project has uh, closed a bit earlier, but definitely those points will um, uh, further update in the, in the future to make it more comprehensive and more um, uh, and will support uh, for the scale, uh, scaling of the retrofit uh, construction uh, in the country. Still, we need to do the rate of fitting more than, as we discussed yesterday, more than uh, 35,000 schools, more than 200,000 school buildings. That is huge demand is there. I hope this manual will support in uh, a bit uh, to, to uh, maintain the quality and uh, to you, you know, proper use the resources. Anybody um, uh, wants to invest on the uh, school safety or the school strengthening uh, program. So uh, uh, I, other technical things, uh, Vita and um, Arjun are already mentioned, so I'll not go on the details. Uh, if any questions or any further discussion uh, needed, definitely I'll be here to, to, uh, to have a discussion on those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Narayan, for that. And I think it's a really important point about the scaling up and, you know, the work that went into the, the manual as it is now was a real collaboration looking at sort of the progression as we went through NSSP and, and, and building on areas that needed more, um, more technical information or, or more sections. And, and I think that's, that's a really key, a key part of the learning that we've had from this program. Um, I just maybe had a well, while if we've if we've got some questions, I'm happy to take some from the floor, but um maybe I'll kick off with one of my own for Varjan G. Um Narian sort of mentioned the scale of the retrofitting potential there is in Nepal. And I wondered whether what your thoughts were on on how we might um promote retrofitting. Um in Nepal in the future, and 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 where we might where we might focus on that. Oh, thank you, Vita. That's for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, I mean, you know, um, there is ample opportunity in Nepal for retrofitting. Yeah. I request not only you, but you know, um, you know, um, to other you know. Um, you know, um, citizens of Nepal, not to wait for you know, the disaster. You know, many of these structures, you know, ranging from individual houses to many of the public infrastructure, not only buildings, the linear infrastructures as well, they are in need of you know, retrofitting. I'm pretty much sure that you know, NRNG you know, does agree with me on this. So there is huge need. We should not wait for you know, the disaster. Yeah. So, and the focus is that, okay, if we are to do so, you know, how can we put this manual 
know, at the front. Because you know, there's a lot of experience is, you know, uh, you know, brought in here in this manual. I'm not sure, you know, whether the technical team have been able to put in all their experiences and expertise in this. I think, you know, uh, you would still like to put in more. So um, there is an you know, ample opportunity everywhere, not only in building, but in other infrastructures also, you know, we can go with, because, you know, the construction techniques are, you know, almost the same. They, that's you no know, same construction materials, but as 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 you know, we're trying to highlight here you know, the uh, quality. So the um, quality of the construction is you know uh, needs to be ensured you know from the uh, very beginning you know, from the choice of materials. You know testing of these you know construction materials at the lab, confirming you know the same quality of materials you know, delivered to the site. So there are a lot of challenges in the supply chain as well. I'm sure that you know manual cannot you know go more in details on that part, but you know it can look into various aspects of the project management cycle, particularly putting construction slash retrofitting at the center. And then you're starting from planning to you know all the construction and and as you have highlighted you know operation and maintenance and all that. So you can you look into all these aspects and you know have you know semis or you know um, you know, sub circles of you know all these phases. That definitely you know this will tell you more stories you know where to focus on. But there are ample opportunities you know all over the country and basically in remote locations you know where you know government is yet to reach with you know, quality construction techniques and, you know, methods that's, you know, doable. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think that's really important that that aspect around the remote areas and, and the ability to get materials to site and the availability of materials is really important as well. Um, so thank you. Um, um, thank you to both our panelists. Um, uh, if we if we don't have any further questions, we've got about five minutes left. If there are any, um, um, Jemima um, or Amy or Leela, did you want to did you want to have any? Um, uh, did you guys have any questions or anything from the from the chat? Um, yeah, I think. Uh... You, Raj Foreo is here, um, he's our panelist tomorrow, but he, we're very fortunate he joined us today as well. Um, and he might have a couple of thoughts. Yes, please. Yes. Thank uh, you very much for joining us. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I speak a few words? Of course, yes, please. Just, just, just uh, not the questions, just the comments, uh, actually. Uh, we have a lot of experience, you know, on the retrofitting uh, since 2009 in the school sector. I am really, you know, the, uh, involved from the beginning on the school retrofitting program in Nepal. Uh, so the, from my experience uh, till now, what I have learned, uh, the main streaming uh, is uh, very important the, in the government program from Palika level, uh, province level and the uh, central level as well. So the mainstreaming in the government uh, program so that uh, uh, the everyone uh, can be responsible. Everyone take a leadership and ownership as well. Uh, particularly when you talk about the uh, new thing, for example, this the retrofitting, uh, it's uh, one of the needy uh, tax or what we can say the program uh, to protect the life uh, and the properties uh, what we can you know the learn from 2015 work as well because you know the in 2010 11 we uh, and 12 you know that we we uh, implement uh, the retrofitting program in Nepal in the school building in Kathmandu Valley and some few in the outside of the Baton Valley uh, those proved us you know the retrofitting is one of the solution to you know the, to improve the seismic safety of the existing vulnerable school building in Nepal. So that can be replicated, you know, the, that can be replicated to other part of the uh, Nepal, not only the schools but also the 
private housing as well, because uh, we do not have a very complex type of structures. It's a very simple structures. And almost of the schools we used, you know, the, after since 1990s, we use in the prototype model. So even we can develop the uh, modular type retrofitting design as well, because there is no such geotechnical investigation because the already the foundation is, you know, the already uh, in the in the in, in his in its position. So the bearing capacity we do not have much problem. Only we have some problem on the liquefaction on the near the river side. So uh, we can develop the modular design. But what I, I have been feeling, you know, the, I have been working uh, in the housing reconstruction and school reconstruction after 2015 as well. The scientific knowledge, what we have, uh, experts from abroad, experts within the country, and the local knowledge, the indigenous knowledge, we need to blend to each other so that we can develop the new knowledge. That means the, some trans disciplinary approach. We need to develop some something so that the local people can take ownership for example, the, I'm the engineer, when I talk with the local people and local masons, they do not understand. And if the donor, local you know, masons ask me to demonstrate to, you know, the, the simple thing given for the something, you know, the, I, I can't, you know, the, I can only, you know, the suggestion paper and some norms and standard values only. So we need to train such, you know, the middle level technicians from which, you know, that we can transfer our knowledge the paper-based knowledge to the practical demonstration. So a lot of works that we need to de do uh, on that part. So I think the government need to take the ownership and uh, yeah, in his program, I think the Department of Education uh, taking the lead on that. And from CLPI Education, we have been implementing the school retrofitting program that can you know, the, go, go on you know, the parallelly. And then more importantly, we need to implement it holistically, not in the past wise, in the, you know, the phase wise, or, or in the, uh, not in separate way. So these are, these are the feedbacks. <laughs> but for the current manual, I think we need to develop a lot of, you know, the different kind of, different kind of, you know, the detailings, you know, the step-by-step uh, uh, step activity wise activity and the local uh, in the Nepal, Nepalese language and with some uh, detailed pixels and details. So a lot of works that need to be done, I think uh, that will be, you know, the, it, uh, that will be done in later on, I, I think. The collaboration, cooperation, and the coordination is a very, very important. The uh, different stakeholders who are working in this field. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is, <laughs> I think I took much time. Thank no, so no, much. thank you very thank much. You so I think much. It's, thank you. Thank it's you so beautiful. much. Thank you. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, yeah, I think you know your points there about being able to communicate the step-by-step -step techniques. That's really one of the key things that we were hoping. Um, to, to kind of build on is make sure that um, those illustrations were easy to read and accessible. Um, I know we've mentioned about the Nepali language, but really a lot of it is to be able to be read just with the diagrams as well. So as much visual um, interpretation as possible. So I think your points there are really relevant around the accessibility um, of the knowledge um, and, and getting that out as far as as far as possible. Thank you very much for, for your for your inputs and thank you both to our panelists, um, Arjun Ji and Narayan Ji. Um, I'm going to hand back over to Leela um, for a few closing remarks. We've got about five minutes before time is up um, and thank you everybody for listening um, and um, yeah please do get in touch if there's um, any further questions. Leela? Okay thank you thank you Vida thanks everybody for your participation today um, of course a big uh, thank you to to Arjunji for being our panelist. That was incredible and a really good um, lead into the discussion. Narayanji, of course, thanks for jumping in and helping us out. Um, of course, your input is uh, most valuable of being as you are part of the project. Uh, and and uh, you, Raj, sir, thanks again for participating and giving your comments on it. We look forward to having you on the panel tomorrow. Um, of course, 
We do have a couple more days of Learning Week and we hope that all of you will participate. Please do um, send that invite out to everybody you know. The more people that participate in Learning Week, um, the better off we are. And I think it should be a couple of really interesting discussions that are coming up. Uh, thanks again um, to our colleagues at Arup for arranging uh, this entire session. That was, it really went off well, and I know it was a lot of work to put it together. And uh, to Amy and Jemima for all the technical um, help that went on. I guess, lastly, I should say that the manual is, and I know everybody uh, mentioned this, but I'll mention it again, the manual is available on the NSET um, website. It will be available on the Crown Agents website soon. Um, and I hope uh, it's useful for everybody. And of course, um, just to wrap up, I want to thank UK for their support of this project. Uh, it's really been a great project and I'm very honored to have been a part of it so far. So thank you to UK. Aid. All right, that's it from my side. Um, and I hope we'll see all of you again tomorrow and on Friday. Thank you. Thanks, Leela. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.